Hello there, my name is Matthew Trewella. I'm the Managing Director of Kenza Contracting, a specialist ground source heat pump installer and uh, contractor and sister company to Kenza Heat Pumps and Manufacturer. Welcome to this site tour. We're here today in Oxford on the Blackbird Lees Estate where we are doing the drilling operations for uh, 60 properties for stonewater housing as part of the Energy Super Hub Oxford project, which is an Innovate UK funded project. We're going to take a look at the, how it all starts from the drilling right through to putting the boreholes in and connecting them up to the properties, then installing the heat pumps and we'll get to see some heat pumps running and in operation uh, later on this afternoon. I'm Adam Masters, Environmental Sustainability Manager for Stonewater. We're a national housing association with around 32,500 homes. We invested in this project because we recognise the scale of the challenge to meet net zero by 2050. If we're going to achieve that target, we need to make large strides now towards decarbonising our existing homes. Here we are at the beginning of the process, where we're drilling a borehole ready to take the probe that's going to ultimately extract heat from the ground. At the bottom of the uh, drill rig is a, is a bit and that's rotating quickly and it's crushing up the rock. We're also pumping water down the inside of those uh, drill extension rods. It's coming out through the end of the drill bit and that water is bringing that crushed up rock back up to the surface into a, a collecting tray and it's then being pumped away to be filtered and separated and the clean water pumped back down the borehole ready to bring new spoil up to the surface again. Here's what it looks like at the bottom of the borehole. The extension rods connect onto here and we'll be pumping water down here and then it comes out the end of the drill bit through these holes and imagine these teeth here grinding the rock up. The water's coming out at a high pressure and it's taking that ground up rock it's pushing it up the outside of the drill rods up the inside that the drilled hole up to the surface where it can be cleaned. This piece of equipment behind us is called a mud puppy and here the water that's come up from the borehole carrying all those solids and the cuttings from the drill bit is pumped here and they're separated out into chippings and mud which can then just be uh, disposed of into a normal skip. The clean water is then sent back to the drill rig, back down the borehole to bring up the new cuttings. We've seen the drilling taking place now and now we've come over to a completed borehole. This one was finished last week and you can see these two pipes here are the ends of a ground source probe that's inserted down inside the borehole. So to remind you, the borehole has a diameter of around 130 millimetres and this pair of 40 millimetre pipes are inserted down with a welded end on the bottom. This pipe here is a sacrificial pipe, which is, is called a tremie, and that's used to pump a grout down the borehole. It's open at the far end, which fills the borehole up, protects the probe and creates a contact between this probe and the rest of the ground. Later on, we'll come back and connect these pipes into the building and connect them to the ground source heat pump itself. And what that's going to do, it's going to send chilled water down this pipe, go all the way down to the bottom of the borehole, and it'll be coming up warmer. So typically we'll be sending it in at around five Celsius, and when it comes back, it's coming in around 10 Celsius. So we're gaining five degrees Celsius from the ground every time that water does a cycle. And we can use that heat in the heat pump, upgrade it, and use it to heat um, hot water and for central heating in these homes. And here we are at the next stage of the process. Directly under here is a borehole, 100 metres deep. And in that borehole is the probes, the same as we saw earlier that were sticking out. This was drilled around six weeks ago and those probes have been cut back 1.2 metres below the ground, so that's four feet below the ground. And a 90 degree elbow put on and then pipes run back along here through a trench along here. And then as you can see, the ground has been uh, reinstated and levelled and grass seed planted and the new grass is starting to come through. There are three boreholes in this area and they're connected together through this underground or subterranean manifold. The three boreholes come into here and then there is a connection that takes the flow and return pipe off to each of the properties that's going to have the ground source heat pump. 
And here we are at Cudstone Way, which is 10 bungalows that are having their existing night storage heater heating systems taken out and replaced with ground source heat pumps. All the groundworks have been completed here. This was the first uh, street to start on this project and all the boreholes are in place, all the manifolds have been connected together and the pipes have been led from those manifolds into each of the properties. They're now having the night store heaters taken out, the ground source heat pumps put in, a new radiator system put in and the ground source heat pumps turned on. The first two properties are already up and running and in those properties they're now getting uh, savings on their electricity bills and they're saving carbon and typically of the energy that's given out by the radiators, two thirds of that energy has come from the ground, one third has come from the electricity supply, so the tenants are only paying for a third of the heat energy that they're using. And we've come into this, inside the property now. This is the ground source heat pump. Uh, it's a shoebox model. This is actually a six kilowatt shoebox model. And what that means is it gives out six kilowatts of heat. And the really cool thing about ground source is that it only consumes two kilowatts or less of electricity. So essentially six kilowatts being given into the radiators and two that you're paying for, the other four are coming free from the ground. Uh, the two pipes here on the right hand side, these are connected to the ground and the way the heat pump works is that it extracts heat from these pipe, pipe work here and typically they'll be coming in around 10 degrees we strip out around five degrees of heat and the chilled water is sent back to the borehole to be reheated. Meanwhile, the, the heat that's taken out on this side, the ground source heat pump, transfers over to these two pipes and this puts hot water around the radiator system. In this setup, it goes into the radiators around 50 degrees, goes round the radiators, loses five degrees and comes back at 45 degrees. So, in essentially, all we're doing is taking five degrees from this side and putting five degrees over this side and the heat pumps just a moving the heat but also upgrading it while it's moving. The interesting and unique thing about this particular project with the Energy Super Hub Oxford is that the thermostats have got an internet connection with them and they're smart thermostats. So the, th the data from the thermostats is going to be coming back to us, us at Kenza and we'll be uh, spending the first couple of months learning uh, the householders' uh, preferences, so how warm they like to be, when they like to be warm, and whether that changes on different days of the week, so we get a, a good understanding of, uh, of how people like to use the system in their homes. And then in a couple of months' time, we're going to start automatically shifting the time that we turn the heating on to synchronise with a special type of electricity tariff called a, a half hourly tariff. This one is going to be provided by Octopus Energy and it's called Agile and they have a different price of electricity in every half an hour and that price is published the day before so four o'clock um, this afternoon they'll publish the prices for um, tomorrow for each of those 48 half hourly segments. Our smart learning heat pump controls will then take a look at those prices ahead and it will synchronise those with uh, the householder's needs and what time they want to be warm and come up with a new heating and timing schedule for the heat pump and it will turn it on and off to minimise the running costs to, to the residents and the householders. So for instance if you like to be warm say 20 degrees at 5 o'clock in the evening most heating systems would turn your heating on at 4.30 or 4 o'clock even and you know, gradually bring the house up to temperature so it's the right temperature when you come home from work. This system, if it realises that electricity is going to be expensive, say between 4pm and 6pm, might actually turn the heating on at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And instead of bringing it to 21 degrees, it might take it all the way up to 23 degrees and allow the system to cool down to your perfect 20 degrees when you come home from work. So you know, using, using energy at different times, um, if it's cheap enough, then the system will decide that and it'll understand that and it'll make those decisions automatically in the background. So every single day the, the system will be making an automated calculation of the cheapest way to get the house at the right temperatures at the right times and then it will just send those instructions back down to the thermostat um, via the internet and that will control the heat pump the following day. Being part of such a high profile project is not only an opportunity to demonstrate our commitment to decarbonisation, but also for collaboration. 
we're really keen to work with our partners within the local communities where we own and manage homes. And this project's been a fantastic opportunity to do that. We're working with the local universities who, and feeding into their research projects. And in return, they're providing us with some really useful feedback on the project. And for our customers who live within these communities, we're hoping to transform the way that they heat their homes, ensuring that they are comfortable and affordable to run. The majority of these properties previously were heated by night storage heaters, which are difficult to control, expensive to run, and also produce a lot of carbon. So when combined with um, smart thermostats and time of use tariffs, we hope this project will really transform these customers' lives. We're here with Councillor Tom Hayes and Paul Brennan, who's a resident of Cudston Way. Councillor, what do you think of the system so far? It looks fantastic. It looks absolutely brilliant. The council declared a climate emergency in 2019 and residents often say to us, well, what are you going to do practically to make a difference? You know, it's too expensive to actually meet this emergency. And I think what we've proven here with the new heating system is it's both practical and it's cost efficient to try and save the planet. Uh, and it seems to be of great benefit to residents locally too. Paul, so you've got a brand new heating system in your home. How does it compare with your old system? With the storage heating, it, it, it was all right. I managed to get on with it fine. Um, but the, the main thing was I just found it way more expensive. It was double the price of, of what I'm paying now. Even though it's only been installed a short time, it's, it, it immediately knows how much I'm saving. If you imagine every single house in this area only using half the energy they would normally use. Well, apart from the saving to the people, the, the, the impact generally would be halved as well, wouldn't it? It's great to see the City Council working here. Um, it's great to see local people being employed in installing the heat pumps. How do you feel about this bringing jobs and new opportunities to Oxford? It's a team effort all round. Everybody's got to work on helping each other to, to do what can be done to, to make things better, surely. A, a lot of people uh, are worried about the disruption that's uh, going to take place. I mean, we are carrying out fairly major engineering, drilling a, a borehole down to 100 metres, so 300, 300 feet deep here. And a lot of people are worried about that beforehand. Um, if someone came to you worried about it, what would you tell them? There is going to be noise. There will be disruption. That can't be avoided. For the long-term benefit, it's worth putting up with. And inside your house, the team that are doing the work, are, like I said, they're second to none. I wouldn't have any hesitation to, uh, in, in encouraging anyone to go ahead and get it done. So Blackbird Lees is the home for this new innovative technology. It's the place where this investment is happening. What does it feel for Blackbird Lees to be getting this investment? It's just an amazing move forward. If only everybody could get it, then everyone would be benefiting from, from the cheaper bills, wouldn't they? And let's face it, right now, everybody is focused on trying to keep the cost of just about every aspect of your life as low as possible. So, there's your answer. Stonewater are really keen to be a thought leader within the sector, and the business case for this project was more around doing the right thing rather than the financial investment or return. We want to demonstrate what's possible with these kind of technologies and although we will benefit from the non-domestic renewable heat incentive that scheme comes to an end in March 21 so we're really keen for the government to come forward with some certainty around future funding for these projects. So the council's declared a climate emergency and this is a pretty sophisticated piece of work that's going on here. What are the very simple basic ways in which this system is helping to meet that climate emergency? Yeah, the, the first and foremost is that the, um, the system is going to cut the uh, CO2 emissions from these properties by about 70%. So taking from their old night store system, which was electricity, we're still using some electricity to drive the heat pump, but um, we'll, we'll knock about 70% uh, of that off. So a huge saving in carbon. And uh, if this were rolled out across the country, you know, it would take us a long way towards our target of net zero, you know, with 70% there. Heating at the moment represents around a quarter, maybe 28% of, uh, of carbon emissions. And if we can make a 70% cut in that, we're doing a huge dent towards our ambitions. 
Um, even better than that, putting a ground source heat pump now and getting that carbon saving now will only get better in the future. So as you continue to decarbonise the electricity supply, more wind turbines, and we had had very recently a big announcement about offshore wind turbines. As that get roll, gets rolled out, the carbon intensity of the grid will keep dropping and the carbon intensity of producing heat in these properties will continue to fall. So it gives a big saving now and a really clear route to, to a genuine net zero solution. So our latest figures show that Oxford carbon emissions are overwhelmingly contributed to by buildings. 81% um, of emissions in the city come from buildings, which is surprising to many because they'll assume it's transport. Um, with buildings being the major contributor to our carbon problem, and you were talking about some of the partnership work going on there involving the university. What are the other partners doing as part of this heat pumps project to make this uh, a better way of fixing our carbon problem coming from business buildings? Yeah, so we're focusing on, on heat. Um, the other, other benefits would be renewable generation. And in particular, once you start converting lots of buildings from uh, say gas heating to renewable heat, like a, a heat pump, you're also getting a, a, a variable energy supply through solar panels and through wind turbines something's got to make all of those things synchronized so part of it can be done with our smart controls as we were talking about but part of it needs to be linking up and balancing with other things so if we're going to decarbonize transport at the same time as buildings then what you don't want to happen is all the heat pumps to turn on and all the electric vehicles charging to turn on exactly the same time and so synchronizing those two things together is really important also then there'll be some things that you can't balance just by changing the timing of when you turn things on and off and the third part of the energy super hub project is to have a large grid connected battery that takes in uh, electricity from the grid when it's plentiful and releases it back to the grid when the grid needs support so it's, it's doing it on a trading engine but it's also providing that grid support so the three elements together and combined with general investment in renewable electricity generation will take both the buildings we were talking about um, which is a lot of heat but also general things lighting and uh, and tvs and you know, general electrical use uh, and vehicle charging and grid balancing all with that central battery so it's it's kind of producing a, a mini version of what the whole energy system could look like if it was completely decarbonized so oxford city council is a really proud partner on energy super hub oxford what role is it playing here in terms of the installation of heat pumps um here uh this this is uh, a private housing association so um oxford have uh, city council have been generous enough to let us use some of the land for storing and for having compounds and for some of the welfare um, we have been in discussion with Oxford about uh, some of their properties coming across and you know, hopefully be able to, to bring that in at some stage as well. So Oxford's a fantastic place to make big investments. We're a living lab. We're a city which is just the right size where if you make an investment or you pull on a lever, you're pretty quickly going to see some change happen. So first Oxford, potentially the whole country. How easy would it be to transplant what's happening here to the whole country? Um, conceptually it's very easy, uh, at the moment uh, the ground source heat, heat pump industry represents around four to 5,000 heat pumps being installed per year. Compare that to 1.6 million gas boilers, you can see that we've got quite a lot of scaling up to do. But from a practical point of view, it's just the same thing over and over again. So it's training more drillers, training more, more plumbers um, to, to work with this system. That takes a morning typically, so it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, so yeah, what we do here in Oxford um, could be rolled out across the whole country and one of the things we're, we're doing one of the huge benefits you have here is the is the university so the university are also part of energy super hub oxford they'll be analyzing the data that we pick up from here and they'll be doing a projection of of what the whole system would look like if it were rolled out across the whole country so there's roughly 24 million homes in the UK that need heating and we'll be able to calculate exactly what that would cost uh, to deploy, how much extra capacity you'd have to add to the grid and how you'd be able to, to manage the grid if, that, uh, if we got to that scenario. By, by 2050, all the, the properties that are heated by gas now won't be, so we've got just 30 years to take all of those onto a, a, a completely new heating system. This is one of those heating systems that can work and the, the demonstration here will show exactly how that could be done, which is quite cool.